Don't place a trade based on what you'll see in this video because there is no guarantees of making a profit in the market. It takes you a long time to become a good trader. So this video here is just to educate you to become a much better trader. Hey traders, John Howell here. And uh, in today's training video, I've just finished all my trading. I absolutely love trading, guys. Um, trading can be such a fun and uh, incredible thing for you financially, guys. It really, really can. But on the on the on the just before I start this training, okay, I'm gonna go. I've got a lot of stuff I want to cover through with you today. In, in today's training, I'm gonna cover to you. Ray Dalio says that this is like the 1938 and the lost decade. What actually happened to the stock market? How long did it, how long did it take to actually make new highs after 1938? Maybe we can expect the same thing. But even though my view on, say, the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones is one thing, that's not my view on all stocks. I'm going to be talking about that today. Also, I'm going to be talking about the GDX, the GDXJ, um, and why that's actually setting up like gold did, or like uh, like gold did before we actually broke out to, say, a 40 plus percent bull run. Also, when will silver take off, right? Silver's been doing nothing. When will it actually start to go into a big bull market? Um, I'm going to talk to you about my thoughts on that as well too, and that's also got to do with, say, this point through here. When will inflation hit and the effects of inflation and what's probably likely to do well as inflation picks up? And that also ties into the market cycle. So I'm going to be doing. I'm going to. I'm going to bring up the the market cycle graph, and we're going to see where is silver right now. Where is say the GDX right now, and so on and so forth. And where do we think maybe gold is right now as well too when it comes to the market cycle. So we've got a lot of stuff that I want to cover with you today. Okay, guys. But before I get started, guys. Back to demand, as you know, that I used to, and I'm also running it again right now, is I'm running back the flash sale. If you need help with your trading, I've got a complete trading course here to get you started on the right foot. Last time I had it at $7, it didn't last long. You get the top deadly mistakes, the 10K permanent plan. You get all you get all, all this here. Uh, video number th four, uh, four, five, six, or four, sorry, no. Three, three, four, five is chart reading techniques. Six, seven is is trading systems. Eight is indicator, and then the rest is basically mindset management and so on and so forth. This is more the foundations. So we have the foundations to a successful trader. We have the chart reading techniques. We have the trading systems, and we also have the mindset all here. If you need help, guys, go here right now. And the biggest one that's going to help you is the video number one is the top deadly mistakes. Because if you if you don't even understand the mistakes you're making, you're blowing yourself out of the markets. So, with that being said, guys, where, where are we here? Right, with that being said, let's actually get straight into the markets right now. Let's have a look at, so Ray Dalio compares this to, to 1938, okay? So, well, let's actually go back to the actual markets itself at 1938. I've brought up this chart here. Uh, I'm using, and so if I go back to, let me see if I can, let's actually go back to 1938, okay? So, because what Ray Dalio says is this, okay? Now, the stock market's not exact, I mean, it didn't, it didn't do the exact same thing. But what Ray Dalio has continued to to compare right now to on a macro level, right, on a big scale, not, not a day-by-day -day basis, will the stock market go up tomorrow? Who cares, right? Will it go down tomorrow? Who cares, really? If you're so, if you're so worried about what's going to happen tomorrow, then you're on the wrong foot, you know what I mean? What happens tomorrow or the next bar shouldn't determine whether you're going to be successful or not. Right, because it's the overall setup. If you get into a bullish setup and the market doesn't do nothing for one or two or three days, but then a week later it runs on for profit, did you make a profit? Yes, right. So that's the way trading works. Um, but more on the whole with that side a bit later on. But now, what Ray Dalio talked about with the whole macro cycles of things is um, and how he's always compared this to the 1930s. And guys, we should be listening to Ray Dalio. You know what I mean? Like Ray Dalio has spent so much time looking back in the past. So he can give it, and, and then he gives us a, a big template, not only in the big debt crisis, but then also, uh, but then also his videos he's done, guys. Um, you know, guys, he's a macro investor, you know what I mean? And, 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 and we all know, right, the same things happen again and again and again for the same cause effect relationships, right? And the same, the same massive cycles, the short term debt cycle, the long term debt cycle. All these cycles matter, guys. You know what I mean? So for the next 10 years, that's what this is all about, right? What's like to happen over the next 10 years? Um, and so how he compares this to 19... Uh, 19 uh, So the 1929 crash, the 1929 top was up here. And then we had a massive, massive, massive move in the actual stock market, right? What actually happened down here? Similar similar events, right? What did they do? They, they, uh, they won. They printed a lot of money. 
right two they bought financial assets um as you can see here right this is what happened down the bottom here um and three it created a wealth gap and then um and then four there was and then after this wealth gap here started to become a rising power right like a different power here i'll get more into that a bit later on but there was similar events that happened this this here is like 2008 okay so similar events that happened here in 2008 happened in uh 1930s then the market ran up now he's comparing where we are right now to 1930 to the 1937 okay to nine to not to 1937 so the 1937 style of crash as you can see it he said he said that we're probably we're probably like in the 1938 period right now and as you can see that this this chart right here is i'm pretty sure it's the yes yeah, the dow jones I just wasn't sure whether it's the Dow Jones or the S&P 500, right? So we can see here on the Dow Jones that the Dow Jones, this here is what happened recently, what happened right now, right now with the virus situation. That's what he believes this is, right? So this here, and this is the top here. And then as you can see, the market rallied up 50, 60%, and then retraced again, and then we started to come down, right? But as you can see, we didn't make a massive crash, did we? No, we did this. And as you can see, this is years over here, guys. This is 1930, 1938 to possibly, let's actually bring this over here, right, to to, to basically 1950 and a lot, a lot more, right? So you can see um, that, as you can see, right, this is the actual, in, this is the Dow Jones here, okay, guys? So as you can see, so if we if we are in this situation and if the, if the similar events are gonna happen moving forward in, if similar events are going to happen, uh, moving forward in the Dow Jones and the S&P 500, what can we expect? Well, we can expect to see what we're seeing here right now, right? Because the government's going to continue to print more money as the years go on, right? We know we're gonna, they're going to try to hold this up as much as possible. So as you can see, right, this was the top over here. And as you can see, it took a long, 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 long time for us to actually break up to all-time new highs in a big bull market here. So Ray Dalio says we're like this right here is where we're probably where we are right now in the actual market itself, right? And you know, guys, and you know, just recently I also heard that that the effects on the economy is going to last eighteen to twenty months. Um, the effects on the economy, but the printing is only going to last three to four months before they have to go do another massive quantitative quantitative easing before they actually um, before they print money again. So as we can see, this is where we are right now. So so if we're likely to see what similar events right we're not going to make new highs out of the actual stock market for a long 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 time right a long 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 time so as you can see right over here that it this this, this was the 1937 crash and it and it didn't break up to new highs what is that so 1937 um, so 1937, and then we went through a nut, and to, by the time the actual stock market made new highs, we were into the 1950s, right? So what is that? One couple of decades, right? Was that, yeah, say 1940s into 1950s, 1937, 1947, uh, 19, yeah, so about, really, all, all that, all my, my 15 years or so, 15, 20, 15, 20 years, somewhere right about there, right? I'm just not doing the quick calculations here. But guys, this is not this is not the first time that we've actually done this. You know, if we go back over here in time, right? Look at this here. This whole 1916, right? 1916 high. Then we actually drop down to 1921, right? So this here, 1916 high into 1917, right? So 1917, one, two, three, four, right? So was that not 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, right? So we had a four-year downturn. And then by the time it actually made new highs, it actually took what? 10 years, right? So the high here was 1915, call it 19, 1915, call it 1916. But by the time it actually, by the time we actually got back to all time new highs again, that, you know, we're at 1926. And then we actually went for a big run, right? And so this happened, you can see this what happened back here in 19, uh, 19 uh, also 1960. You can see the high here, in 1965, and the low here was 1965. Right, this was actually massive boom, massive bear market. 1965, 1975, 
almost 1985, right? This actually happened. This this is a massive bear market for many, many, many years, right? A couple of decades, really, wasn't it? What was that there? High was 1966, 1965, uh, 75, and then we also went down to 85. So yeah, probably probably two decades worth of a bear market. And as you can see, it took a long time for the market actually to get to all-time new highs. So guys, if you believe, right, if you truly believe that this here is, that, that we're never going to go through one of these periods again, then we, we know we are, right? Like, if you actually look at the actual stock market here itself, right, look at this here. Look at this here, the 2000 and what? 2001. 2000, uh, the 2000 tech bubble into the Dow Jones had a, had a drop. Then we rallied up to all time new highs again, didn't break new highs, and then we dropped, and then we actually did broke out. Right? So, um, guys, these things, you know, if you're thinking about the all time new high situation, then, you know, this is, we, this is what it looks like that we can expect what's actually going on right now in the overall stock market itself, as, as you can see through there, right? So you can see there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff going on through there. Um, and we may be getting ready for, as Ray Dalio says, let's go back to this point through here. We may be, get, we may be, we may be getting ready for this, what we call the lost decade of stagflation, right? Where not really much is going on, uh, for the next 10 years. And through this whole situation, uh, we also know, we also know that there, what came out of this one here was the rising power. And then also the number one was, was war. So really 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 interesting stuff there guys um on that there now this next point that i want to make with the s p 500 right so we have a look at here right we have the s p 500 the dow jones and even though uh on a macro level i can see what ray dalio is saying and i'm what i'm seeing here on, on my longer term charts that i'm actually bearish long term overall on the dow jones and the s p not just today but i uh, know not 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 this one day right but the overall picture here i'm pretty bearish on that <clears throat> but that does not mean guys that does not mean i will not be taken uh, even though i have a view of bearish in the markets right the market's always right by the way but even though i'm bearish on say the dow jones if i bring up the chart through here and i bring up say the dow jones even though i'm bearish on the dow jones and i think the dow jones is probably like to roll over here somewhere and start to head back down to twenty three thousand. even though i am that it does not mean, guys, right? It does not mean the Dow Jones and the S&P, I may have a view on that, but that does not mean I'm not going to take bullish trades in the stock market, right? Because what the Dow Jones is doing right now has nothing to do with, has nothing to do with the individual stocks, right? So if you're taking, if you have a view on the Dow Jones and the S&P, but then you take that view to an individual stock, you don't, right? Um, so as you know, right, as you know, Probably for the last month, I've been sort of bearish on the market. I'm like, yeah, well, I, don't, I don't really believe this rally through here, whatever, right? Dow Jones, S&P, right? But do you know in the last month that I've had a lot of really good successful trades, right? One one trade was plug, right? This was actually a bullish trade here right now. Actually, I know some of my private clients are still in. Some of my private clients are actually still in this trade right now. Um, I didn't. I got out early, right? But where did I get out? I got into on this, see this little breakaway bar through here? If I go back in time... Right, this breakaway bar. This is actually this actually met one of the rules. This actually met the rules for one of our trades. Um, I got in there, and then my my private used my private clients used um, a trailing stop technique. Some of them did anyway. Some of them got out with me on a short term basis. But as you can see, right in the last sort of couple of months, even though I've had a view on the S and P five hundred, if I have a bullish setup that that goes to my system, I'm going to take that. Right, ALT is another one. Um, ALT is uh, is another one. Right. Look at this here. I got in. I, I'm actually still in ALT right now as I speak, guys. I got in on ALT down the bottom here. So even though I've had a view on the stock market itself, right? I'm actually in this right now, and this has given me a three, four hundred percent return so far. This is actually more of a longer term play, right? So I'm going through my swings, but I'm trying to make a point here, guys, that if you have a one of the biggest mistakes that I've always I've made in the past was. My view on the stock market is going to go down. So that view, which may be wrong or right, we never know, right? Because it's just a view. But even though that's the case, if my system has a it has a setup that's contrarian to my view, which may be wrong or right, um, I still need to take it. Why? Because it's a really, really, really good trade to take. Makes sense. And so 
that's one of the things, guys. I've had a phenomenal, phenomenal year this year. Um, and as you can see, right, I'll, 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 the, uh, the the trades that are really, really, really kick, kick goals for me have actually been bullish trades for me this year. So even though I may do analysis on the, the Dow Jones and the S&P 500, even though I may do that and say, okay, we're probably likely to go down from here, we're probably likely to get a bit of a pullback, which I still believe, right? I still do believe that. Um, looking at where we are right now, I still do believe we're likely to roll over on a short-term basis anyway. It does not mean that I'm not going to take bullish trades, right? Because the Dow Jones does not equal what every single stock out there does. Um, now, the NASDAQ, that's just a different kettle of fish, right? <laughs> I really thought the NASDAQ would roll over by now, but there you go, guys, right? My thoughts mean nothing. It's just look at this nice upward trend. I really thought we'd actually get down to these lows through here. It didn't do that. So uh, the NASDAQ is one of those things, guys. The NASDAQ is just... It's it's still in that V bubble there, right? So it'd be really interesting to see what actually happens through here when it comes to, you know, when, when it comes to the Nasdaq itself. Um, so I hope that makes sense for you guys. Now, one thing I want to share with you is this. Let me actually bring this over here, okay? I want to bring this this section over here, and I want to talk about the GDX and the GDXJ and why what's happening right now on all these markets is exactly what gold did before we actually started to see this uh, the breakout or basic, basically being a 40% bull run right that's not from the the ultimate low to ultimate high was a 50% run right from the from this low point but from basically from the breakout to where we are right now it's had a 30% move right and we've hit this resistance up the top here now as you can see right the GDX the GDX and even silver are doing the exact same thing as gold did before we went for a big bull run, right? So it's the same, same, but different here. Look at this here, guys. So look what actually happened here with gold. What happened here with gold? We went what? We went sideways all through here, as you can see, right? So we went sideways for a long time, right? Long time. We had a massive crash, not much going on. And then we started to break out of this not much going on for a long time, many, many, many years. And then we broke. Look what actually happened. We had a move. Look what silver's doing right now. Silver's doing what? Not much going on, right? So what may be happening over the next three, six months? We may start to get what? Something like this. Maybe maybe even a bit of a pullback initially and then a breakout. But see how if that happens, right? That's now like that point through there. Look what's happening on the GDXJ point, right? Let's bring up the frame. Look what look at look at the GDX. Look what See, the, see how the GDX just went sideways and now we're doing what? We're breaking out. See how that's like what? This point over here. See how it looks very, very similar, right? The patterns. And also, GDXJ, which hasn't broken out yet, but once we do start to break out and we start to do that, right? Now, this is a weekly chart here, guys, down the bottom here. These are weekly charts. So these things take time, right? They, they take a lot of time. So don't expect this market to start to, oh my goodness, the bull market's starting tomorrow. Let's jump on now. And it doesn't do nothing for a week. Slow down, guys, right? This, this is a weekly chart. It takes every single bar on these charts. takes one week. What we're looking over here, guys, is 10 years worth of data, right? So it takes long. It, guys, if you want to jump on big moves, it takes a lot of time to for bull markets to form and for bull markets to continue, right? So as you can see back over here on... on uh, on the uh, on gold, if I just open up this weekly chart here on gold, as you can see, right, gold actually broke out here, right. Um, so, but as you can see, right, gold has been gold has been going up for one year, but through the bull market, look what happens, right? We have a breakout, and then we spend maybe a month doing nothing, and then we have a breakout, and we spend two or three months having a pullback, and then we have a breakout, and then we have a bit of a flush down, and then we. Do you see what I'm saying through there, guys? So if you're ever thinking about, okay, this is a big bull market, we're going to jump on, and John said the big bull market's starting. That's what I believe, right? I truly believe the big bull market is starting. But guys, big bull market means a long time, right? You guys that are so impatient, please don't trade the market because the market's going to chew you up and spit you out, especially if you're impatient, right? So anyway, I hope you can see, guys, how the GDX and the GDXJ is exactly like gold and how that's forming through there. So the next thing I wanna to talk to you about, guys, is uh, let's actually bring up the silver here, okay? So when will silver take off, right? When when, when will silver really, really, really start to gallop um, in, the, in, in the movement of what's going on right now? 
Well, the first thing that I do see here, guys, when it comes to silver is this. If I bring up, say, my trend line through here, let me just erase everything off the screen. I do see how there's major levels of resistance all through here. Um, I, I've always had this trend line coming down through here as well, too. So something through there. So I do see, guys, that once we start, uh, you know, we have this resistance level through here, and then we have this... We've got a few areas of resistance through here, but once we really start to break, say, back above, say, 20, well, this here has been doing nothing for a lot of time. So once we start to really break above 20, um, I believe that that's when we can start to see a big move, right? We can start to see a nice move up over a few years, guys. So if you place a trade today and it goes down tomorrow or the next day, oh my goodness, it went down. Really, guys? Don't do that, okay? Please don't do that to yourself. It's, that's, not what, that's not the way the markets work. Um, there is foundations to these markets. And so if you're jumping on big trends, you have to endure whipsaws and pullbacks and all that sort of stuff. Makes sense. So, but I, I also honestly believe that, that as we can see here, right, I believe this low here is indeed the low for many years to come. So what's happening right now with the overall, uh, let's actually bring this back to, to, to this level three. Okay. What's actually going on right now with the overall, uh, inflation type of thing, right? So if I bring up the, um, so right now, guys, uh, there's been a lot of money. Or there's been a lot of printing of money, right? But there's been no inflation. Now, why is that? Why has been? Why has there been no inflation? Well, even though there's been record numbers of money being printing, there's been no inflation because we've had people holding on to it and not spending it as much as possible, as much as the bit of the, the you know the government would like makes sense so as you can see here right this here is the velocity of money this is basically you know how, how you know this is basically the people you know how many times people are going out and using the same money right so the velocity of money simply means that if i go if i go to the restaurant and i spend a hundred dollars at the restaurant then then the the lady that i gave a ten dollar tip to she then goes to to the bar that night and then buys, buys a glass of wine you know, for five bucks. Oh, that's, a, that's a cheap glass of wine, by the way. Um, I think so anyway, <laughs> you know, and then so on and so forth, right? That's the velocity of how much it actually is done. But so as you can see, right, there's the, the, the velocity of money that people are actually basically spending out there is slowing down. That's the reason why, guys, that inflation hasn't been big for a long, long, long time, right? So what happens initially and just by studying this here what happens initially is that all this money is being printed into the system um trillions and trillions of dollars in the system um and then it basically it basically it, it does nothing for for velocity now if we go have a uh, sorry it does nothing for inflation but if we have a look at inflation once we start to see and and inflation will start to pick up again um, once we start to really see the velocity of money here, as you can see, it dropped even more. Once we see the velocity of money pick up, and it will pick up, guys, okay? If you understand, if you, especially if you're a bit elderly, like if you're in, even the, even your mid-30s, right? Even 40s, mid-30s, 40s, look back over your time, right? Look over history and start to understand how, look look at your life from a, from a perspective of cycles, right? Like, for me, same with trading. When there's when there's a lot of really good trades, I know I'm going to go through a period where it's going to be really quiet and there's not going to be many trades. And then there's going to be the cycle is going to repeat. That's happened two or three times this year. There's been two or three months where there's a lot of amazing trades, and there's been a month with no trades. And then there's been a month with maybe one or two good trades. And then there's been a month of a couple of good trades. You know what I mean? And and so on and so forth. So anyway. So as we can see, right, the velocity of money has been dropping down a lot through here. So when the market, so when the velocity of money picks up and it will start to pick up with all the money in the system. So the government has basically had to do something like this, right, to keep up with basically this. But what happens when this is here and then this starts to pick up? Guess what? Then all this money is going to come flooding back uh, or, or pushing this. Then we're going to start to see real inflation, right? Real, real, real inflation. And then that's when, guys, that's when we start to see this inflation here. That's when, when that starts to happen, which I believe is probably a couple of years away from now, guys. Not, not, not right now, but pro probably, probably, a probably a couple of maybe two, maybe three years away. I've seen start to see really inflation pick up. I believe I uh, could be wrong. It could be early. I don't know. But then when that happens, guys, we're really going to start to see things like gold. 
uh, or even things like silver, really, really, this is the silver weekly chart once again. This is when I see silver really, really, really start to take off massively because of the inflation of what's going on there, the inflation of uh, will, will that will start to inflate these prices, right? Which no doubt is going to push up, which is going to push up. It's probably going to be a dampening on stock market, but it's going to push up. At, it's going to push up the pros, It's going to push up property prices. That's why, guys, after this next maybe one or two years, that's why I'm very bullish on on the property market, right? Um, one, there's very low interest rates. Interest rates will go back up again, by the way. Uh, when that happens, it's going to be deadly for the for the government. But um, but when inflation rises, that's going to push up asset prices, right? Um, you know, because everything starts to become more expensive. Um, so or asset prices such as such as property, not stocks. I don't believe stocks will rise over the next, say, five or six years. But but property, that's why I'm, I'm a big believer that property will go through another massive boom because when inflation starts to pick up big time, rents go up, property prices go up, like everything starts to pick up big time, you know what I mean? Um, and, and that will happen, guys. That's what I'm saying. Over the next 10 years, we're, we're likely to see silver take off like, like, like there's no tomorrow. And, you know, maybe in the next five years, I believe we're likely to see a silver silver start to break out. And, you know, or maybe it's even started that, that big bull, bull trend right now, as I was saying before. But that's what I was saying before, guys, right? Like when the velocity of money picks up, and it may take another couple of years for that to, for that to pick up, what, the inflation will start to pick up. When that starts to pick up, property prices are going to go through the roof again. Right, and even if we do, yes, we're probably going to go through through a bit of a slowdown here over the next maybe one year or so, but then it's going to pick up massively, right? Um, and and with the amount of money in system and so on and so forth, and that's why I believe, guys, people who have places like, you know, um, people people that have places like housing, and then also uh, you know rental properties and so on and so forth. If you're positive cash flow right now. Um, it's only going to get better and better and better for you, right? Because prop, not only will rents go up for you, which means all more, more positive cash flow for you, but then also I believe that um, that 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 the, oh, the asset price, the property prices, will go up as well too. So let's have a look at this here, guys. I want to one of the last points here I want to talk about here is where are we right now in the cycle of things when it comes to silver? So this is really interesting, guys, because I find that. Let me see if I can bring this up here, right? So this here is the actual uh, the, the the cycle of things when it comes to when it comes to the the markets itself, right? Um, I actually put this up just recently, um, and let me actually bring this up through here. So this is basically the the psychology, the market, whatever, right? Of what, what we're seeing through here. And so as you can see here, right, we had a big massive move up, then we had a bit of a crash, then we had a move up through here. Uh, personally, guys, I truly believe we are at this point right here in the overall Dow Jones and S&P. Not all stocks, by the way, guys. Not all stocks, right? Um, and then I believe we're getting ready for this over the next 12 months, especially over the next couple of years. That's what I, I do, truly believe we're going to start to see, right? But we're moving on to silver, right? Where is silver right now in the cycle of things? So we can see here, right, that the cycles of where silver is, we can see here this big drop, anxiety, denial, drop, 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 drop. Look at this here, right? Anger, depression, does nothing for a long time, and then we break out, right? So look at this here. Look, see this here. Now, let's see where let's, let's see where gold is right now and also silver. So if we look at this cycle of things when it comes to gold and silver, let's actually do this here. Firstly, Let's actually, you know, let's actually, go, we'll go with gold first, right? So let's actually go with the gold chart first. And let's bring this chart up over here right now. Let's actually see if we can see, let's see if we can see that we can see the C, C to C. Let's see if we can see where are we right now when it comes to, when it comes to the, the market itself, right? So firstly, we had, firstly, we had the big bull market over here in, um, in gold, right? And then we had the big crash, right? From 2000 down to, down to as low as, uh, as, um, as low as sort of that, the $1,000 level, right? So we had that there. So what, so what do you think, what, what, what do you think this is here? So if I bring up, let me actually just bring this up here. If I bring this over here right now, right? And actually, you know let me, let me bring up the GLD charts because I, then I can, I, I can then bring up, let me bring over here. I'm going to bring up the GLD chart only because I can actually get a lot more data on the actual chart itself. So let's go back to the weekly. 
All right, let's actually let's actually go back to the monthly actually, and we'll see where we're we at right now. Where do you think we're at right now? Let's go back to the weekly. Okay, so let's have a look at this here. Phase one was what big massive bull market. Let's go to here. Actually, let's go to the monthly chart here for a minute. Right. So what do we have here? Actually, this is actually perfect. Yeah, let's do this here. All right. Um, so what do we have here? Right. So we had phase number one, which was obviously the massive bull market, which was here, right? From there, we had a rally up sideways and then massive, massive euphoria, right? This here was what? This point through here. With me so far? And then what we had, we had a drop down and then a little rally up. We had a drop down and a little rally up. Then what happened? Then we had a big, oh my goodness, anxiety, da 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 anger, right? Anger. Who's short of the markets? Have you ever heard that before in gold in the last little couple of years? Oh, they're suppressing it. They're keeping it down. All that garbage, right? Who cares, right? And then look and then look what happens through the cycle, right? Then we're now at the bottom here, right? Not much going on for a long time. Depression. Oh my goodness, this thing's never going to take off. And then the market rallies. And then we start to break out. See how this cycle, guys, this, the, this, not only the, the, the market cycle is exactly what gold is doing. We dropped down through here, through here, and then we did what? We went through this period through here, which is what? This period through here. So if we're having a look at gold right now, and gold is just, just, just slightly recently broken out of this sort of pattern through here, and we've just seen this, well, gold is just this point through here, right? We're starting this. We have, we we are believe. I believe that we're starting this 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 belief over here. I believe right now, gold, right, gold, right now is getting getting to see this disbelief over here. So this disbelief over here is this point over here, right? So if I blow this up a little bit more, so you can see it a bit more. So see how this disbelief ends here? Well, then it goes back to where? Over here. So if we can see how this point right here is disbelief, but then it goes back to where? It goes back to over here, where this is like, oh, this is disbelief. Oh my goodness, this rally will fall like others, blah, 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 right? I believe this point through here is this point through here, disbelief in gold, in gold right now, right? Um, the reason why I'm saying that is because once again, we've had the slump for a lot of time. We've had the slump for a lot of time. Now remember guys, this is a monthly chart here, right? So this is one, two, three, four, five, five years, maybe five, even close to six years of slump. Now we're just starting to break out, right? See how that's through there? So the cycles of things on the, even though, even though I believe we're probably like, we're, we're, we're going to get pullbacks, right? We're going to get something like that soon. We're going to get something like that. We're going to get something like that. We're going to, you know what I mean? Like we are going to get our pullback swings up and down. It's never just going to go up straight, uh, straight up every single day. So that's where, that's, that's where we are right now in the cycle of things when it comes to gold. Now let's go have a look at the good old silver price. And let's see where, let's see what we can actually see here when it comes to the silver price. Right, let's actually go, let's actually bring up that weekly chart here once again. Uh, actually, let's go to the monthly chart here. Um, and we can see here, look at this here, right? We can see when it comes to the monthly charts, we did what? We had, see this very big sort of big move up? That was sort of the big move up through here. So on silver, when it comes to, where is market, where is silver on the, in, the, in, the, in the market cycle? We see here silver had a big move up. And then obviously had a big move up here, right? Then we had a big what? We had a big crash. Then we did nothing for a long time. We had a crash, did nothing for a long time. And then this one actually came all the way down to the bottom here, didn't it? See how it came, the bottom actually, the bubble completely retraced 100%. That's basically what silver did recently, right? Came down and they continued down through there. Oh my goodness. And then anger, right? Remember the anger point through here? So if I bring up the weekly chart once again, now I'm going to go to the weekly chart here, guys, so we can just zoom in a bit more. Now remember guys, remember I said before, and really interesting, right, when you step back and look at this from a from a, from a perspective, look at this here. Down the bottom here, anger. Who's short of the market? Why did the government allow this allow, allow this to happen? Right? It's it's what have you what have you all of you heard, right, the last sort of three, four years from silver and gold? Who they're, you know, they're suppressing the market, they're keeping it down, all that sort of garbage, right? So 
where are we right now in the cycle of things when it comes to so we've had we've had the we've had the big crash haven't we so for the big crash then comes what then comes this point through here so i truly believe that as you can see after the big crash we had down through here we've done nothing for a long 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 time right we're doing nothing for a very 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 long time so so I, that's one of the reasons why I believe we're at the bottom right now, long term for silver, because we're at the bottom here and just not a lot. Gold has already started to break out, right? So once we start to break out through here, what do you think we're likely to start? This point through here, right? And then we have a pullback. Makes sense. Um, and then we, and then what you're going to start to see is once, once we start to see that, then you're going to go into what? The next cycle of things. So that's where guys like I truly believe this low point through here is the ultimate low point. And yes, we may get a bit of a pullback through here. And then once we start to break out, this belief rally, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff, right? And then we're going to go through to here. And then what's probably likely to happen over the next three, four, five years is something like that. Three, four, five years, guys, okay? Stair-stepping motion. Sideways for a few months, up for a month, pullback for three months, right? This is how a bull market happens. I just want to I, I want to say that to you guys because you guys have expectations you're going to see that on the charts and it's never it's not going to happen right doesn't matter how many people say that on YouTube and always say we're gonna see it. and there's this one guy on YouTube right he goes vertical spike coming <laughs> it goes up two percent I told you the vertical spike was coming <laughs> anyway I fought for that too, guys, right? So anyway, guys, so that's what I wanted to share with you in today's training. I hope you enjoyed today's training, uh, and I hope that you can see how uh, what's uh, what's going on right now with everything in the actual stock market itself, guys. There is so much out there that you can see. There's so many opportunities out there right now when it comes to individual stocks, the way you're trading, and so on and so forth. So guys, make sure you head on down to johnsflashstyle.com, grab that $7 trading course, get started today and start to learn how to trade these markets for yourself.